How many here have listened to Billy before? Yes. All right. How many here have learned a lot? Yes. And I'll tell you what, that boy has rocked my world. My, my, I don't sleep anymore. <laughs> Not at all. In fact, I'll tell you what I did, a little quick story. Billy talks about all the time how he listens to, to Winston Trout. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I downloaded Winston Trout's videos that Billy recommended last time. And I put it in real player, and I converted them into MP3s, and I put them on my iPod, and that's what I'm rocking to when I go to sleep. So I love it. All right. Is everybody ready? All right. Let's hear it for Billy. All right, oh, guys. <laughs> Some really important stuff that I found out. We're going to make a joke of it tonight, like we usually do. We had some really good victories this week. Uh, Ron Dunn, well, he won his little case, yeah. I don't know how many hours of paperwork filed into the court, but uh, he walked away a winner. Dismissed. That's, that's really cool. And, and, you know, everybody needs to hear a victory once in a while because, you know, we're, we're getting clobbered on their hockey, I guess you call it their hockey ring. And we go out there with basketball shorts on and basketball shoes, and then they tell us we're playing hockey, and it's just uh. not fair. <laughs> Some other friends uh, went to court with them. Does anybody know the power of a power of attorney? Did you know that you can have counsel with you in any court as a litigation? All you got to do is give them power of attorney to walk in with you? Mm. We showed up in court, and um, we were waiting around for the, uh, the pirate ship to open up. They'd raised their flag and let us know that they were pirating. We went in there voluntarily, <laughs> because if we didn't, they would have voluntarily thrown us in jail, or at least my friend and his wife. But anyway, we got there, and um, some, really good, some really good things I found out by going to different courts to see how they're blatant about things and how they're sneaky about things. These people were pretty blatant. There was a lady there that looked like a bowling ball with a birthday hat on. Is it okay if I pick on her since she's not here to defend herself? She was a real aggressive. You could tell she hadn't been told no much in her life. But anyway, she starts yelling out, John Henry Dow! John walked over and says, uh, My name is John. I'm here on that matter. and I'm a third-party intervener. And She says, Are you John Henry Dow? He said, um, my name is John, and I'm here to uh, take care of the matter. Are you John Henry Dell or not? And uh, he, was, he was being polite, but she wasn't. So me being the guy that I was, I was real polite back there, and I go, hey, 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 hey. Listen, he's already asked, answered that question three times. Now, you're getting ugly with him, and I don't appreciate it. He answered you three times. The answer is not going to change no matter how many times you get louder or get ugly. So you need to knock it off. <laughs> She did. She knocked it off. She looked at me and she said, what's your name? She's trying to contract with me. Yeah. What's your name? I want to contract with you. I said, my name is Amicus Curie. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. About that time, a security guard walks up looking at what's going on. And I go, hey, thanks for coming over. We need you here. This lady just assaulted my friend verbally, emotionally, and mentally, and it's not right. All of a sudden, she, instead of being on her side, she kind of turned on our side and went, really, what's going on? And I said, well, this, she just got all out of line. He answered it three times, and she's still brutalizing him. I mean, what's, what's the point? She's trying to get him to say something that he, he's not. I said, no, no, you need to knock it off. Well, she walks off, and I said, I need your name because we're going to file a complaint against you. So the lady that uh, walks over says, well, I'm, I'm with the victim, vic, victim's advocate. I said, great, he's a victim. He was just assaulted. She goes, really? What, what, what happened? I said, that lady right there, who is she? We want to file a complaint against her. She goes, her name is so-and-so. Like right away, hey, finally, somebody's going to stand up to that bowling ball. <laughs> I'm just telling you what happened. So anyway, things are going well, you know. Uh, I don't know that she said, this is one thing that she said. I need your name on this paperwork for my paperwork. And I go, that's your paperwork. We don't give a crap about your paperwork. Do we? No. Is that my responsibility? No. I hope she gets fired for not getting it right. <laughs> and if you're listening to this lady, you are a bowling ball with a bad attitude. All right? Oh. Somebody needs to throw you down an alley. <laughs> Whoa. 
All right. <clears throat> so there's some important, some really important things that we're finding out. How many people have sent stuff to the, the court and didn't have any, res- any, any luck or any positive response? Raise your hand. Okay. I'm going to give you some insight, maybe why, why you didn't. Now, there's a lot of people out here that haven't had any interaction with the court and are afraid of the court. It's kind of like getting ready for the Super Bowl. They don't let you know that you're playing until Saturday night, and you get there Sunday morning, and they don't tell you what's going to happen. So for educational purposes only, we're going to be, thank you for giving me that cue. Please remind me to say that every once in a while. So there's a couple of rules that they don't tell us. <clears throat> now, I'm going, to, I'm going to go down this path. You know how I do. I'm going to give you a bunch of information. You're not going to know where to store it. Okay? So just leave it floating around on your desktop. And when we get to the end of this, I'm going to tell you which file to open to stick it in there. So can Brad, um, well, when Brad gets back here, he must have had to go get another drink. I'm just kidding. We're not drinking here tonight yet. The Secretary of State, has anybody ever thought about what their job is and, and why, it's, why it's even there? Who gives the notary the ability to do what they do? Secretary of State. Now, why, thanks. why is it so important for the Secretary of State to sign your documents? I mean, think about it. You, you got a witness, you can show up with your travel license or your driver's operating thing. Notarizing the notary? I mean, they've already, they've already pulled you into a corner, stapled a number on your forehead, an SS number. Does anybody know what the SS is? I'm just telling you what I read. I don't know what it means. But it sure sounds like something else, doesn't it? But anyway, it's crazy, these words, isn't it? Okay, so what is the job of the Secretary of State? Under the Constitution, the President of the United States determines U.S. foreign policy. The Secretary of State, appointed by the President, with the advice and consent of the Senate, is the President's Chief Foreign Affairs Advisor. Created in 1789, that was a long time ago, by the Congress as a successor to the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Department of State is a senior executive department of the U.S. government. Notice I said U.S. government. I didn't say American government, did I? Okay. The Secretary of State's duties relating to foreign affairs have not changed significantly since then. Ah, but they have. Okay. But they have become far more complex as international commitments multiplied. These duties, the activities, and responsibilities of the State Department include the following. Now remember, we're looking for weird words, right? Look for words that just don't mix. Like jumbo shrimp. Yeah. You can't get a jumbo shrimp. <laughs> They're all shrimps. Okay. So you guys are catching on quick. Serves as the president's principal advisor on U.S. foreign policy. Conducts negotiations relating to U.S. foreign affairs. Grants and issues passports to American citizens. Now, somebody told me the other day, or was it today, that they went into the court and tried to file something. No. They went to get an apostille. That's a big word. Apostille. Well, what it is, is uh, it's a stamp from the Secretary of State saying that you can use this document. They're verifying that the notary that signed it actually had a commission. Their stamp was good, and they were in good standing with the Secretary so that you can file a document into a foreign country. Okay? That's, that's what an apostille is. And they said, well, what country do you want to file it into? What foreign country? And so they tried to say Arizona, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't buy that. So he said, well, it's actually it's the United States, and they wouldn't buy that. So he said, well, I'm an American citizen, and it tipped a red flag up. Okay? He had a problem. And they got kind of aggressive. So I had to leave. Why would the U.S. government be so adamant about not helping out an American as a foreigner? Because we're foreigners. Okay? Now, we're foreigners and we're getting some knowledge. Okay, so to the foreign councils, it says grants and issues passports to American citizens and ex- executors. That's a neat way they spelled it. 
executors to foreign consuls in the United States. Did, did that just hit you like a ton of lead bricks? All right. Advises the president on the appointment of U.S. ambassadors, ministers, consuls, and other diplomatic representatives. Are we in a position to be diplomatic representatives for a foreign nation? Yes. Yeah. 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 We're there. Advises the president regarding the acceptance, recall, and dismissal of the representatives of foreign governments. This is going to get crazy here. Personally participates in or directs U.S. representatives to international conferences, organizations, and agencies. Negotiates, interprets, and terminates treaties and agreements. Ensures the protection of the U.S. government, the U.S. government, to American citizens, property, and interests in foreign countries. Are you guys catching this? Okay, when I say American, <clears throat> think of a foreign country. Because if you're American, you're foreign. If you're a U.S. citizen, you're domestic. Are you guys seeing this? Do you... Do you understand how important it is when you go to court with a traffic ticket, if you want to put an affidavit of truth in there, that it has to be signed and sealed by the foreign government allowing you to bring that paperwork into their jurisdiction? The Secretary of State gives commissions to notary publics for the public to pass through into the court. If you don't do that... You don't have authorization to speak. Do you remember in the Matrix when he says, I'll take my phone call, and he says, what good is a phone call if you can't speak? So drop your bomb of paperwork on every court from here to New York and see how you get in and see how things happen. Start doing affidavits of truth signed by a notary, and things are different. Okay? For entertainment purposes only. <laughs> I've just given you a thing here. Let's go on with some more of this stuff. Ensures the protection of the U.S. government to American citizens, property and interests in foreign countries. Supervises the administration of U.S. immigration laws abroad. Abroad Provides information to who? American citizens. Did you hear U.S. citizens anywhere? I didn't either. It must be a misprint. They, they must have messed up. This can't be true. Provides information to American citizens regarding the political, economic, social, cultural, and humanitarian conditions in foreign countries. And guess which foreign country they're shoving that stuff in on. Okay, do you remember in 1933 they passed a little thing called HGR 192, and it says that all crimes are commercial. So since then, we've been acting under public... Can I say it right? Public, public policy. Okay. So policy is policy law? No. It is not law. So we're operating under public policy. The Secretary of State knows a lot about policy, lots about policy. And we don't know anything about policy because we think that policy is law. We even think statutes are law. And if you let them, they'll get your consent to operate under those policies. So, if I have a policy that you can't wear a certain color shirt and you come to my house, I can enforce that policy, can I? You'll have to leave with that shirt. It's my policy. Okay? I don't allow drinking before noon on the days that end with D. I'm sorry, the day, days that end with Y. <laughs> Those are kind of policies, right? But I can't enforce them at my neighbor's house. Can I? No. I mean, I could. As long as the neighbor let me. That would be consent. Mm -hmm. You see, you guys are saying no, but you, you're not thinking. You guys got to catch up here. I can do whatever I want at my neighbor's house until he says, hey, enough's enough. You're imposing your political will on me. Did you guys get that? Yeah. Yeah. It's all politics. Political will. All right. Informs the Congress and American citizens on the conduct of U.S. foreign relations. They're doing pretty good this week, guys. We need to get some more taxes in order. All right. Hey, got a whole bunch of houses out there that we need to collect on. Let's go ahead and pose another foreclosure rule. Let's go ahead and get Mr. Murs to step up to the plate a little bit here. We need some collateral. How about that? Is that a political will? That's policy? All right. Administrators and departments of state supervises the Foreign Service of the United States. Now, did you see that? They just threw it back in there. United States is back in. Hey, all right. It's four to one. 
<laughs> you guys are catching on, aren't you? Like a ping pong. When I read a Congress, w- w- excuse me, when I read a contract now or an offer from a corporation who may have court at the end of their corporation status, you can see the contract sticking out blatantly. You can see them now. When you look at stuff, when you read something, read what they're saying. You got to read between the lines. You got to pick the words out. Okay? Everything is an offer. Everything is in commerce. Me standing here right now, I'm conducting commerce because I'm breathing and, and burning up calories, and I need some farmer to grow some groceries because I'm going to need some nourishment. I need a bottled water company to be putting water in the bottle or getting it into a pipe here. We're conducting commerce every time we breathe. Okay? Now, there's some really good corporations that got into position that they can take the interest from the principal without repayment of the interest to the principal. Are you following me? Mm-hmm. And charge us uh, a little bit for every time we breathe. That's the way it is. You want to stay alive, you're going to pay. It's sad. It's really sad that we've come to this point. The, the good news is, is that now that we understand that, we can... How did they change the, the Constitution? What did they add to the end of it? Four. Amendments. Amendments. Oh. So... They changed the contract, didn't they? They added amendments. So when we get a contract from, say, a foreign entity, is it possible to change a contract with amendments? Yeah. It is. So who is the only person that can change the contract? We the people. It's you. Not even we. It's you. This is all happening on a single basis. Okay? So if you can amend a contract and send it back to them, they have the right to counterclaim. And the last truth shot back in the form of an affidavit on an amendment settles the deal. Um, done. Did you send the last did you send the last paperwork off before the court? No, I'm talking about when they when they ruled dismissal. You were the last guy to fire your 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 um, Affidavit. You was. He just he just proved it. Anybody that's won here knows that they were the last person to put something into the court. If, if first guy to walk away from the battlefield, what loses? loses. That's the way it is. You skate off the ice rink first. You lost. Now we may not have ice skates, okay? But when they come by, grab one of those hockey sticks and start using it. Okay, you don't have to move around. You can just take out a few guys. <laughs> I'm not saying it's fair, but they haven't been fighting fair for a long time either. For educational purposes only. <laughs> for educational purposes only. And I'm not talking violence here. I'm talking video games. In addition, the Secretary of State retains domestic responsibilities that Congress entrusted to the State Department in 1789. These include the custody of the Great Seal of the United States. Wow. The preparation of certain presidential proclamations, the publication of treaties and international acts, as well as the official record of the foreign relations of the United States, and the custody of certain original treaties and international agreements. The security, or sorry, the secretary also serves as the channel of communication between the federal government and the states and the extradition of fugitives to or from foreign countries. Now, I was a fugitive about four months ago, okay? And they wanted to bring me into the United States for a trial. And I told them I didn't want to go. I told them I didn't want to consent to extradition to the United States. Now, that all happened within about three inches there was a ship there. They pulled up their, their pirate ship right in front of me. And there's a, a gate to go into the pirate ship. And I said, hey, I'm going to stay over here on my ship. I don't want to get on your ship. And they said, well, if you don't get on our ship, we're going to charge you more and we're going to throw you in jail for a longer time. And I said, well, look it. <clears throat> I don't like boating. <laughs> this isn't my kind of boating, okay? I just as soon stay over here. Is that okay? And they said, well, you can stay over there if you want. But you need to sign this paper. And I said, what's that paper? And it says it is a 
This is what it said. A consent to waive my rights. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's what it said right on the top. Wow. I, saw, I looked at that and I go, oh. So I just handed it back to him. I said, I'm going to go ahead and pass on that. I think I'll keep the rights that I got. I don't feel very comfortable with them because I don't know that you are going to observe them. But I'm going to go ahead and stand over here with my rights and you stand over there with your guns and your pirate ship and your big cannons and your flag flying. And I understand that all these greenbacks, oh, no, they're not greenbacks. Darn, they're Federal Reserve notes. All these in my pocket really belong to you. And I realize that every time I transfer them to someone else for barter, that I owe you something for that. I agree. It's a bad position I'm in. But I just found out that they were created by me. And you guys just borrowed them from me. So let me say you just go ahead and credit the account for me. How's that work? Is anybody excited about that? Yeah. Okay, for entertainment purposes only, that's how it's supposed to work because we're foreign. Now, if you're not foreign and you're a U.S. citizen, we still like you. I was once one, too. <laughs> so when you guys are reading stuff, it's so convoluted. Everything is so convoluted because attorneys with law degrees who really have English grammar degrees. Okay? If you don't know what subrogation means, you're in big trouble. If you don't understand that word, if you don't understand rogatory, if you don't understand simple terminology words that we hear every day, if you don't understand exactly what they mean, you're going to enter into a contract that you can't get out of mentally, and they will beat you. Okay? Now, I'm really proud of some people that are here tonight because we've had some really great victories. Okay? We've had some really good victories here. And I would love to share them with you. There's one brutal, brutal case that's in a, a manila envelope. And I know someday, when the Republic is rolling, we'll be able to pull that out and show that this was a hinge pin on the turning of their eyes to see who we are. Because we can do this peacefully. We don't have to go out and get ugly. We can respect our brothers who are still U.S. citizens. We can protect their rights until they understand that they don't have any. And then maybe they'll want to go down to Walmart and refund their benefits and privileges for real rights and duties. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is the history and the duties. And um, I want to go down... A, at the bottom of the page, well, medium of the page, it says the Secretary of State also commissions notaries, public, registers lobbyists. How about that? Does anybody know what a lobbyist is? How about that, huh? They're telling you right there, it's okay, bring your checkbook, come on down here, register with us, and we'll get you hooked up with a favorite senator or representative from your favorite state, and maybe you can get some stuff your way if you've got a big enough checkbook, because you're a lobbyist. They've got to register right here. You guys can't believe that, can you? They register at the Secretary of State's office. I wonder if they have to pay to register. I wonder how much they pay to register. How about that? Okay. Registers charitable organizations. Do you guys know any charitable organizations? Churches. Churches. How about, uh, yeah, I didn't say that word because I don't want to offend anybody. But a charitable organization that needs a tax deduction. Wow. Telemarketers. Hey, let's put them in the same group. That'll work. Distributes copies of all new state, state laws to the public as requested. And who's the public? Is anybody standing around, right? It's all of us. I mean, that's kind of a conglomeration of citizens of both sides of the group. Complies, I'm sorry, compiles and publishes the administrative rules of the state's agencies, issues certificates of trademarks and trade names. Now, let me ask you this. If you go in and ask for a license, what are you doing? You're, you're giving them your rights in exchange for a benefit, right? 
So if you're going to go in and get a trademark, and they give you that trademark, who does the trademark belong to? Yeah. Yeah. So if you got a corporation with a trademark, guess who owns your corporation? How about that? Sad, isn't it? All righty. <clears throat> Files all secured financial transactions. Mm. Mm. Secured or unsecured? Who are you today? Secured. Yeah, we're all secured party. We're the, we're, my friend calls it the secured... Secured credit partiers. Uh, Doesn't that sound like a great party? I like that. Okay, and they file all those secured financial transactions under the Uniform Commercial Code. Uh, do you, you remember the word understand, what that means to stand under? Mm -hmm. yep. So what are they filing all that stuff under? The Uniform Commercial Code. Notices of appointments of officials and members of boards of commissions and commissioners, excuse me, and commissions made by the governor and files contribution and expense reports for all state and federal candidates and political organizations. The Secretary of State has had nothing to do for the last 200 years. So they gave him a little bit to do. And why doesn't the Secretary of State have anything to do? Because there's not much foreign going on in Arizona until... March third, two thousand and ten. Isn't this cool, guys? Are you see what you see what happened? They they painted us into a corner, and they and we haven't turned around and looked. But in the corner, there's a door. The door opens out. So as they're painting us into the corner, they don't want to paint us in too tight. And they did this last little recession that we've had. There's a lot of us that are going, "Hey, I don't like this corner." I mean, when you get up off your knees, you bump your head into the doorknob. Open the door. This is, this is it. This is just one. Remember, we went over the uh, District of Columbia Act of 1781. I'm sorry, 1871. And we went over the Zip Code Act. All these things that they, they're passing on us. Are you guys, isn't this exciting? Yeah. This is so cool because we don't have to do what they're doing. We don't have to do what we've done our whole life. We can stand up and change position. All right, Secretary of State issues numerous publications, including the Arizona Constitution, the Arizona Administration Register, the Arizona Administrative Code, the Residential Landlord and Tenant Act, and that, by the way, you're the tenant. I don't care if you own your property. You know that now. Right. Okay, and guess who the landlord is? The state. That's why you pay rent to him every year in the form of a benefit. <laughs> You can call it a tax if you want. They call them benefits. You might as well start looking things the way they look at them. Okay. Now, the Notary Public References Manual. And it goes on to say that it's kind of under the uni Uniform Commercial Code. Lobbyist handbooks, bingo law. How about that? There's another gamble. Bingo and lobbyists. The laws concerning trade names and trademarks and limited partnerships, the publicity pamphlets, general elections. How about that? They're even into the elections to make sure everything's fair. Yeah. In each even-numbered year and many other pamphlets and booklets. I looked up the word commission because we think commission means something. I mean, how many people want to take a guess at what commission means before we read it? The act of granting certain powers or the authority to carry out a particular task or duty. The authority so granted. The matter or task so authorized investigation of fraud was their commission. A document conferring such authorization. Okay, so they give the commission, the Secretary of State gives commission to the notary. So when we use a notary, we're using that to go into the private to take care of business. Without a notary, you might as well forget it. They're not going to look at you. You can't speak. You got your lips sewed up. You need to get in there and start cutting those strings open so that you can talk. Secretary of State is the key between America and the United States. How about that? All right. All right. Um, let's. Um, what, what do you say? We answer a few questions, and I'll answer them the best I can without making fun of the bowling our ball. business. Our business arrangement that we have. 
Okay. Go ahead. Who's first? Carla. I had such a comment. I'm not convinced that there's really any valid notaries in Arizona at all. And the reason why is because they don't do their oath. And they know it. And they don't want them to do their oath. Okay. Let's say that they don't have an oath. They, none of them do. Okay. Let's say that they, they really don't and there's, there's nothing there. Who gave them the commission to do what they're doing? The Secretary of State. So who's responsible for that? Okay, so if the Secretary of State gives them a stamp, then we've got the we've got the open door. When that is stamped by them, we can go in. Now, let me say this: we need some notaries that aren't afraid to get a mean letter once in a while. Because what happens is when the door opens really wide and we get a flood of notary presentments, affidavit of notary presentments where the notary says, hey, I'm going to say that this paperwork was sent to a U.S. agency. That's what we need. I'll volunteer. <laughs> okay. So if, if a lot of people went down and applied for their notary and understood exactly what they're doing, they're the go-between. Do you remember the phone? Yeah. Yeah. On the matrix? That's the notary. That's a notary. Huh. Hey, how about that? We gotta get out of here. I need a notary. <laughs> 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 we made it. She stamped it just in time. Okay, next question. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> when uh when we when I sent my paperwork in to the Secretary of State, there were one of the very few Agencies that actually returned the whole packet with this, you know, letter that was unsigned, that saying that you know we're not going to accept this, and if you don't, and if you attempt to resend it, we are going to throw it in the garbage next time. Okay, so a threat from the Secretary of State saying if you send this paperwork to us again, we're going to throw it in the trash. I think I don't remember exactly what it says. That's pretty close. Okay. Okay. Um, do you know the laws about mutilating, tearing up, destroying, or losing? Documents. Okay. Look that one up. It's a really good one. So when you send something to them through an international mail department, okay, and you have a certified copy or a certified original green card saying it got to them, and they just send it back to you, what proof do they have that they sent it back to you? Nothing. They don't have anything. So who has the last affidavit of truth? Swing. Ta da! Okay. Oh That's kind of interesting because you said a green card. <laughs> That's right. You got to have a green card to get in yeah. and out of the country. Yeah. What country is it? How about that? Oh. All right. The light. Oh no. Okay, go ahead. I didn't hear her question. What she said? The notary bond? Yeah. I don't know what a notary bond is. Oh, okay. What they want to do is make sure that you're bonded up because you're a small subcorporation and they don't want to be responsible for anything that you do that may harm the major, let's say, the mother ship. The mother pirate ship. I'm sorry, the mother ship. <laughs> for entertainment purposes only. I'm not calling anybody a pirate. I'm just saying it kind of looks like it with the skull and crossbones. Any other questions? <laughs> All right. How about that? Okay. Any other questions? I did a good job. There's not too many questions tonight. All right. Well, look at This is for entertainment purposes only. All right. Don't do anything. Oh, we got one more question. Go ahead. Then how does uh, Republic notaries come in to play... Only within the Republic, or will they deal with it? In a perfect world, before you as a Republic representative would be allowed to be extradited to a foreign country, they would have to write a letter of rogatory or use one of our notaries to contact you with lawful paperwork. Does anybody know the difference between lawful and legal? 
Okay. Okay. For education. Lawful and legal. That's the difference between a tire and a wheel. Okay. Legal is the thing that's on the car. The wheel part. You can't drive around on wheels. It wouldn't make it very far. So under the the presumption that the wheel and the tire are the same thing, they get around with their legal. But lawful is what's right. Lawful is what God requires of us. You guys mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Yeah. If they have to use the word law behind something, it's not law. You ever heard statutory law? That's legal. That's policy. That has to do with a social group or network, political status, that is all under a little group of people. It's kind of like uh, the laws in Walmart when you go in there. I mean, it's 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 not uh, it's not legal for someone that works at Walmart to go in there and drink some liquor and then go over and clock on and go to work and their thongs and their slaps and their jams and tank top. They say, hey, you're supposed to have on our uniform. You can't do that. You're fired. Well, if you're not an employee and you go in there and you've been drinking and you walk around in your slaps and your jams and your tank top and they go, hey, and you go, hey, I'm not an employee. I'm not a citizen of your group. And they go, oh, okay, then you can go ahead and walk around. In fact, go ahead and get another six-pack or whatever. <laughs> There's umbrellas in aisle 14. Okay, that's the difference between lawful and legal. So we've, we've been hoodwinked into believing that everything is the same. It's not legal. Legal isn't lawful and lawful isn't legal. Now, if you go to a river and you say, I'm at the river, it's kind of like saying, I, I'm, I'm an attorney at law. We're almost there. We're at there. We're right there at it. We're at the river. If somebody's in the river, they're an attorney in law. I ask you to go through every yellow page book. Now that would take you a year under lawyers and see how many are actually attorneys in fact or attorneys in law. I've never seen it. Attorney at law. Attorney at law. You guys know the difference between a lawyer and attorney? <laughs> a lawyer interprets a law. It comes from the word law. Interprets a law. Upholds a law. Attorney comes from the word tourniquet, which means to twist. <laughs> All right. Look at before you guys do anything, okay, with the uh, Secretary of State or its designee or its commissioned officers, make sure you understand that you put that paperwork together in a way that's lawful for you and legal for them. Because you don't want something getting thrown out on a technicality. Okay? You guys understand that? Great. Any one more question that ran in the back and then we'll we'll call it a day. Just just a comment, legal would be similar to under color of law. How about that? that right? Yeah. Yeah. They use that all the time. They say on uh, the color of law. Okay, so right. Color of law. Anytime they gotta use law behind a word, it's not law. Okay, go ahead. If, if you become a de facto notary, is that another contract you have to rescind in your secure party? He's asking if uh, you become a notary in the de facto, is that another contract you have to rescind? There's lots of ways to handle that. Um, there's a lot of guys uh, who are great contractors in this room, by the way. Build some of the nicest homes. So if you're watching this on TV and you need a nice home built, we've got some great guys out here. We've got some great surveying companies, okay? <laughs> And actually, uh, they've got a dead guy who lives in a post office box about this big, a little tiny guy, and he has a license to contract. And so when he needs to go out and contract, he goes over to that post office box and he gets him up in the morning, he puts him in his back pocket, and he goes to work with him. Okay, because he's working under color of law, too. Do you guys get that? <laughs> All right. 
thanks for coming down. I hope that uh, we can keep on with the informational purposes only uh, for education. And uh, appreciate you all coming down. Thank you.